Hi, everybody. It's Congressman Jamie Raskin coming out to all my friends in Maryland's beautiful 8th District and beyond for my favorite time of the week. It's Local Hero. Uh, we have an extraordinary local hero for you this week, and you may have already read about his story. It's Sergeant Patrick Kep, uh, who's been with the Montgomery County Police for a decade. He grew up in Howard County, where he wrestled in high school, went on to earn his business degree from Towson, um, and he was on duty on a unit that works to stop drunk and erratic driving um, on our highways to keep people safe on the roads. And uh, that's when on October 18th, I think it was, Sergeant Cap was struck um, in his vehicle in a crash that resulted in him losing both of his legs. Um, he's in good spirits right now. Um, recovering at Walter Reed Medical Center um, to much love and acclaim from everybody throughout uh, Montgomery County and Maryland and across the country. Uh, Sergeant Cap, welcome and thank you for being our local hero this week. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Um, tell us about um, the unit that um, you were working on and what exactly you guys do when uh, the, and what you were doing when the accident took place. Yeah, the unit I'm in charge of, it's called the Alcohol Initiatives Unit. It's uh, myself, my corporal, and uh, five officers who are dedicated to um, solely to finding and uh, taking off of our roadways uh, impaired drivers, whether drunk or drugged drivers off the roadway. And then also just general traffic enforcement as well. Um, you know, that's part of out there looking for trying to find those drunk drivers who find erratic drivers and speeders and things like that. So we're a traffic enforcement unit. We're under the traffic division. So um, it, it's a great group of seven people total that I'm, I'm very fortunate. Every single one of them is amazing and, and means so much to me. Um, and then that night um, on the 17th into the 18th, um, it was just a normal shift for me. Um, I had made an arrest of my own that evening and, and transported them up to Germantown. Uh, finished with that whole process and then was going to meet with one of the guys on my unit just to kind of decompress and talk at the end of the night and see what was going on. Uh, we had learned, I learned from him uh, a little bit that um, there was this lime green challenger that night that was causing some trouble. Um, so I made a couple phone calls, talked to our duty commander, uh, talked to some of the other officers involved, just trying to keep track of everything because of the pending things that, you know, we won't talk about, but the pending cases we we're just kind of keep tallies on everything that was going on. So that finished like 255. I've told, told him, Hey man, go home, you know, and I was going to find a place to lay my head for a couple hours uh, because I was getting ready to go down in the morning to work a detail uh, for our cert team uh, in DC to help with crowd control with the planned protest. So couldn't find, uh, couldn't get into the one place. Uh, my access card didn't work. Uh, so I was coming back up County uh, to go to Germantown and or Gaithersburg and, and, lay my head for like an hour and a half, two hours. And I heard um, the calls from the officers uh, start to come out on the radio again for that lime green challenger um, about 3.30 in the morning. And that's when I got re-involved and um, uh, just felt the need to, you know, go back and, and help with that because it was something that I, I knew who it was. I knew exactly what it was. And yeah, I was done at three o'clock with my shift. We're five to three. Um, but it didn't matter that whatever time it was, uh, I was in the county and, and it was something that I was personally invested in uh, for myself, but also just, it, it was such a danger to the community. So, um, I got, this guy was driving um, more than a hundred miles an hour. Is that right? I'd heard he was going more at, than a hundred miles an hour. It, when I had had a previous interaction with him, yes. Um, I, what he was doing exactly, uh, the night of, um, I, I, I can't recall a little bit of and I wasn't exactly involved in um, I just heard that uh, he was baiting uh, some of the other officers that night and then we came up with plans and um, then that led up to the collision itself um, and when I was struck in the roadway um, and then came to rest in the center median of I-270 and you know I like I said I remember all of that stuff I remember everything from the crash uh, going forward um, and, you know, was there in the center median of the roadway. And then, you know, the rest of my life had changed at that point and, you know, was uh, started that next process. It's, you know, I, I think from right after the crash, people talk about time slowing down and things like that. I, it, it did slow down. And somehow when I was coming from the 
place where I was struck to where I land or where I um, came to rest, I remember looking down and seeing that something was wrong with my right leg. Um, and then when I came to rest, I was sitting up just on my butt with my, what was left of my legs that I didn't really know at the time in front of me, just upright, just like I am right now. And I reached down to my right leg and uh, I felt and I came up and saw that there was blood on my hand and I had some choice words that I said to myself. Um, and then that's when I got on the radio with that radio transmission that we've heard on the, uh, on the news with my car number is nine whiskey 10. So I just got on, I said, whiskey 10, I've been hit start fire rescue. Uh, I'm at Watkins mill. Um, and that started the rest of the, you know, my life changing process. And within minutes, within seconds, uh, officers were there, um, thanks to the plan that we had set up and what we were doing. Officers were there to put tourniquets on my legs, which saved my life. Um, and, and, you know, I'll stop, I'll pause here for a second because I'm, I'm obviously very grateful that you're, you know, recognizing me as, as what you call a hometown hero. Um, but all of these people that I'm about to speak about, and I won't name them by name, but just individually, they're heroes as well, because every single one of these people saved my life. The ones that put tourniquets on my legs saved my life. The ones that, the one that was there for emotional support and was like a guardian angel to me to make sure that, you know, her hand on my hand and, uh, you know, just her words to me saved my life in a different way. Um, she had called for the helicopter, you know, the fact that we have Maryland state police that are phenomenal. Uh, and we know that that have such great resources with their, uh, medevacs saved my life. Um, the, fact that fire rescue montgomery county fire rescue was there as quick as they were and they were able to continue to stabilize me and get me ready to go and and they put tourniquets on as well just to double up and make sure you know that saved my life again as well um and then you know the flight medics once they landed saved my life in a different way and then the fact that we have as you're well aware of and, and most and hopefully all of your constituents know that we have you know, the University of Maryland Medical Center shock trauma, you know, our Adam Scali shock trauma is, you know, I, I've known it for my whole life, seeing it on, on the news and knowing I've been there for work, unfortunately. Um, it's where lives are most definitely saved in such incredible ways. Um, so that saved my life. And then knowing that we have the best, uh, hands down, uh, it's the best trauma surgeon in the world. It, it, I, I have no doubt. And I'm sure you, you, I hope you've met him and you know him and, uh, you know, have dealt with, but, you know, Dr. Scalia, um, that it was just incredible. And then going forward from there, you know, just this support system that I have here constant, I, you know, I'll say it, it, that you, you know, hopefully can't see it, but, and hear it, but, you know, I have five of my fellow officers that are here in the room with me that just want to spend time and uh, be here with me, even though they're not talking to me, I'm doing something else, which is, you know, uh, they're fine. They just want to be here and be around me. And that's what got me through those eight weeks and two days at shock trauma is just them being here with me. If you asked anyone, you know, what, you know, what I responded to when they said, what do I need? You know, what can I do for you? What can I bring? I didn't want anything. I didn't need anything. There wasn't a whole lot I could have, but I just wanted them to come back or be involved, whether it was a text message, a phone call, uh, a letter, uh, whatever, or coming in person, you know, not everybody likes hospitals, not everybody, you know, has the time to come to Baltimore is able to family, uh, whatever, it, just being able to have some, you know, that sense of family, uh, is what it was. And it wasn't only our law enforcement family. It was, you know, uh, certainly other important, prominent community members. You know, I had the governor come and, and sit with me and, and speak to me. I, I had, um, our county executive. Um, I had, I officiate division one college football. So that family um, was huge to me. And then my family, family, I was able to have everyone fly in from all across the country. Thanks to some very, very generous programs that they were able to fly them, you know, for free and on short notice. So uh, that all saved my life as well and continues to, and it's what gets me through uh, every single one of these days. Well, it's um, it's beautiful to hear you talk about your recovery and the way that your family and the community have rallied uh, to you. And certainly we all feel that, Sergeant Cap. Um, the unit that you work on um, is dangerous work. Um, I remember the family of Noah Leota. I don't know if you knew Noah Leota, but um, 
As a state senator, we did anti-trunk driving legislation that we named after him the compulsory interlock device in the cars of convicted drunk drivers because he was on your unit, I think, um, when yeah. he was killed by a drunk driver. Yeah, he was doing the work of the holiday task force. Um, I, I, I did. I only knew Noah in passing. Um and I was very young on the department. I was only two years on the department when that when his crash happened. But um, yes, he was part of the holiday task force, which is going on right now. You know, as luckily I have other wonderful people that are handling you know my work and my medical absence. But he was doing that exact work as well, and, and like you said, was trying to stop drunk drivers and was struck by a drunk driver. And yeah, we do dangerous work. We're out on the roads. We're we're making traffic stops. We're on two seventy. We're on. In Noah's case, 355, we're, we're on back roads. Yeah, we're out there just making traffic stops and trying to keep everybody safe. Um, I mean, is it the case, uh, I don't know how much you can talk about it at this point, but that the, the driver who hit you was actually taunting officers and viewed it as some kind of game? Is that right? I, I can't speak too much to that specifically. Um, yeah. I, I can say that he had he was known to taunt officers, uh, and he was known to drive recklessly. Um, yeah, beyond that, un unfortunately, yeah. I can't talk about a whole lot of it because it's it's obviously pending. You know, it's a, it's an open case that you know gotcha. I'm certainly gotcha. going to testify in. And, and but yeah, I mean, what's out there is out there. Obviously, with court records and everything, he was a known he was known to to bait police and taunt police, and uh, yeah. was obviously doing it that night, which is what led to the situation that we came to. Just an astounding thing. But um, look, I, I want to ask you one final question because um, you're not just uh, a local hero to us, um, but you've become a hero to people all over the place because of the work you've done, but also because of the magnificent valor and courage you've shown in recovery. But um, we don't talk about it much on our little local hero series, but it's a difficult thing to be thrust into that position. And um, um, you certainly have not had a career where you've sought the limelight and yet suddenly everybody no. wants to talk to you and you're on yeah. TV and all the newspapers. Uh, what is that like for you? And um, how have you been able to handle it with so much grace? Uh, it's difficult. Uh, like you said, it's not something we seek, certainly as police officers, you know, Yes, we're out there. We're doing what we're, you know, our job, and we're in the community, and we're involved. But you know, we we certainly don't want, you know, the camera, the TV camera on us. You know, camera camera is on us all the time nowadays in in our in life. And then I think back to it, kind of in the uh, football official sense. I think this is one, you know, one of many many parallels. This one of my best friends. It's the football official stands next to me and Lieutenant Johnson. But. Um, think of football officials uh you know any official sports officials you don't notice them until something bad happens and then you're like oh the darn referees or the darn umpires in baseball games so yeah it's it's something in my life you want to stay out of the limelight we're, we're very much you know stay there just you know stay out of it i've been, i have had to speak some uh in on camera with my position in the alcohol unit especially around the holidays like last year you know, promoting the um, enforcement of impaired driving and that kind of thing. But yeah, it's something that obviously now I'm thrust into it and it's something that I wanted to do. It, it was certainly my, my department and the public information office and all, all the way up to the chief, you know, respect my privacy and my healing and all that. And I actually said probably two weeks sooner than these started, I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to do it. Like I'm okay to do it because I, mentally to recite the whole incident i am okay with it can't if you ask me how i don't i don't know how it's just something that it's i'm okay with it i remember it it's it's my life it's my story now um but uh yeah i i felt that if people wanted to talk to me about it and cared about it then it was something that i felt was important to be able to tell to people in the right way because i want to make sure that it's not just about me. It's about these people that are literally in front of me right now, uh, behind me at the door. Um, it's equally about them and about the different families that have truly come together to, again, save my life and keep me going day by day with their positive energy and, and you know, caring and love for me. So.
Well, we want to recognize that everybody in that community you identify as heroes to. You are at the center of it, but all of them are making it possible for you to recover with um, so much grace and so much power. And uh, we also want to recognize you for your all of your heroism long before any of this happened, because it's what you do every single day, along with everybody in your unit, which keeps us safe on the roads from people who just uh, unimaginably, unaccountably engage in the terribly sick antisocial act of drunk driving and violent reckless driving. I lost a cousin of mine uh, on the roads to this uh, as well. And I know what enduring effect it has on families, but you're a hero for what you've done for us, what you continue to do for us and in what you're doing at this moment, Pat. So we're sending you lots of love, lots of strength and uh, appreciation in the holiday season. And we look forward to seeing you in the new year. Thank you, Congressman. It really, it means a lot that you uh, thought to do this and thought to recognize me. And again, it's um, equally as much for all the people that are around me, like you said, and I said that, that got me through this and continue to, and not only my friends and family, but our community as well. Again, I, I you know, just to not, keep going too much but it's great even here at walter reed to be you know rolling down to physical therapy and someone you know kind of stopped me in the connector and say you're the police officer aren't you and it's, yeah and uh, and they thank me because they're here they're a part of our community here in montgomery county and and follow it and care and that that just means it means a lot that someone actually cares to stop me in the hallway and 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 ask and say, you know, thank you. I'm praying for you. I'm I'm thinking about you, whatever the case may be. So um, I'm thankful to everyone for it, not only just you, but you know, all your constituents, everyone around, everyone beyond your constituents as well. Um, it it really means a lot to me, and I and I thank you and everyone. Thank you, Sergeant Kep, and send love to all our friends at Walter Reed. It's an amazing community, and um, it is. We'll, we'll we'll be in close touch, Sergeant Pat Kep, awesome. our local hero. Thanks so much.